continuing our look now at the best in children's television. This morning, the new kid, or dinosaur on the block. So the big purple reptile that kids can't resist. The big purple dinosaur. <laughs> Teaches about love and, and it just kind of like suits the kids. And always, there's that signature song. Okay, like, share, subscribe. Awesome, I thought I'd better start awesome, the show Nancy. the way we want Purple Tales podcast to be thought of. So smooth. Did you like it? You I did. finally took me, well. it takes me a while. You got but it. But I got it. You do have it. So here we are, Carrie. <laughs> yes. What a week. You know, after having Pia on last week. She really, you know, I think she really touched a lot of people, inspired a lot. She inspired me. Well, and I know some of the comments have said that they're going to go to Lion King uh, on Broadway yes. just so they can see Pia. Absolutely. When well, I love the story, right, of, of going to do it for one year and now she's six years. And <laughs> um, I think that was kind of like you and Barney. Yeah. I'm just going to do it for a couple of shows yeah. here. And I got, I've got this job at Chili's. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that I can always go back to. Yeah. Anything stick out for you about the Pia episode and maybe some of the comments you've gotten? The number one to me was the fact that it took her two and a half years of auditioning to get through that show because that's the reality of this business. Ever, anyone that's ever been in this business understands, you know, the first thing you get need to get used to is no, because you're going to hear it a lot. And the fact that that was her dream and she didn't stop and she did it, pretty inspiring. I've got something I want to share with you real quick. All right. And this is one of these studies I found. And a lot of it has to do with why in the world and how was this Barney created? I mean, why a dinosaur? Sure. And I hope we get some of that answered today yeah. with, with a very special oh, guest we we've got coming to. up. But here's the thing. The incredible knowledge of children about dinosaurs uh -huh. is based on a phenomenon that in the field of psychology – is known as intense interests. Okay. It's a very strong motivation for a specific topic, and they say a third of children develop at some stage throughout their childhood, as a general rule, usually between two and six, okay. an intense interest in something. A lot of times it may be trucks, sure, but dinosaurs top the list because it's it, it's it's kind of, you do have to use your imagination sure. and kids can learn all about dinosaurs and maybe know more than their parents. Sure. So I just thought that that was very, very interesting. It is interesting, especially uh, a huggable, lovable dinosaur. Well, that's true. <laughs> and especially when they're purple. Yes. So Carrie, yes. I think that should lead us up to our guest today. There, there's so many ways to describe. I've known her for a long time and it's uh, so exciting to have her here. Um, she was from the very beginning. So she was a director of sales. She was the senior vice president. Um, so maybe she can answer she why was, it's a dinosaur. She was, huh? We had to mention before she was also Cheryl Leach's neighbor. Oh, this is Debbie Reese. Okay. Debbie. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Thank you so and much. And you can for see, being look here. at all the things she's brought. We've got a lot of people are going to be losing their mind. They want to see these Barney plush and these Barney. Well, here's from the beginning. Some amazing stuff here. So let's can we do you mind? Let's start with with your being in the neighborhood with Cheryl. But I know you came from somewhere. Came from another country. I did actually. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm an immigrant. Okay. Welcome. Thank you. I'm actually a citizen now. Well, thank goodness. Okay. So I came in 1986, and I was a school teacher from Canada. From Canada. Okay. And I had three children, and my oldest was going to kindergarten, and I couldn't work because I didn't have a green card. So I got very involved in the neighborhood. There was I volunteered at the school. I um, there was a ladies group. So my neighbor across the street, Sue and I, ran the toddlers um, activities, and that's how I met Cheryl. She had a toddler. She brought him to our events, <laughs> and I also she she also volunteered at the school. So we met that way. Okay. So how did you get involved with Barney? I mean, was this something that she was already doing when you met her? No. Well, because she, you were part of the focus group, right? Right. So she said to me one day, hey, you know, we'd be interested in your perspective. We're having a focus group at my father-in-law's house. And, you know, we have someone coming from a video store and someone coming from a toy store and, <laughs> you know, some other people. And would you like to come? And I was like, oh, sure. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> So I went, and it was in Plano at that time. It was a no like the countryside. Plano, yeah. I was driving through this, and I thought, "Oh man, this might be the last they see of me." <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
But we sat around the, uh, you know, the living room and they asked questions and Barney was a snuggly at that time. He was a little blankie that was going to come to life. And he was a blanket. Mm -hmm. You're going to hear a lot of stuff. He was like a little, heard before. like a little lovey, you know, how yeah, little children yeah. have that. And so we had that focus group and we all went away and sometime later, um, Cheryl took her son to see, there was a traveling dinosaur exhibit in Dallas. And she went to see that. And Patrick, of course, loved the dinosaurs. And she said to me one day, well, what do you think? You know, maybe what about a dinosaur? And I was like, well, that's a great idea. You know, when I taught school, there was always years where it was crazy dinosaur mania. That, that interest, mm -hmm. that, that intense interest. Exactly, okay. as you said. Mm -hmm. And they could say all the names, you know, pterodactyl. And here's right. someone who can barely say mama. And they're like pterodactyl <laughs> and all these big names. Um, so I thought that was a brilliant idea. And then Dennis came up with the colors. So so where did you Dennis get involved? The, Dennis the Shazer. Yes. I know. I feel like, see, now you're, yeah. you're making sure, but I feel like uh, I know uh, him. Yeah, know. yeah you do. Oh, oh yes. my goodness. Okay. Yes. So then how did you get involved with this? So then Cheryl went off and produced, they, they, she actually hired Sandy Duncan to be in the first three episodes, which turned out to be genius because... It really helped us keep those buyers on the phone for another four seconds. <laughs> they tended to hang up quickly. Um, so she hired Sandy Duncan and they shot all three shows, The Backyard Gang, uh, Three Wishes, and A Day at the Beach. And then when they went into post and were ready to, she's like, oh, now we have to sell it. So what's you, plan you A for a selling? You became a mommy blitzer, right? Exactly. So they came <laughs> up with this idea <laughs> that okay. the neighborhood ladies would sell them and we'd get, I don't know, let's say 25 cents a unit that we sold. <laughs> we had to sell them in groups of four. And... Um, yeah. And they called you, what did they call? We were mommy blitzers. So it was the neighborhood ladies and yeah. they had a training session, but I was on vacation in Canada. So I missed it. And when I came back, the list had all been dispersed to these people who took the training. And my friend across the street gave me some of the pages from her list. Ooh, uh. So I started calling and um, then they called me from the office saying, what are you telling people? Because you're selling a lot more than anyone else. <laughs> and I was like, really? Okay, well, I'm just telling them what I see when my children watch Barney and how he teaches them to play and they go out and imitate what they see on TV. And I love that as a teacher and as a mom. Well, let's role play. I want yeah, to know exactly. what you know. I want you to tell us how, if, if you're making a phone call, what did you say? So, and who wow. are you calling? Uh -oh. and who oh my calling? gosh, the worst list ever. <laughs> uh, I'm sell We only sell kites. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> I guess you wouldn't buy a video then, but occasionally, you know, Florida, New York, Texas, those were kind of the, the states that tended to be more open-minded. And so I'd say we have this dinosaur with Sandy Duncan, and by then she was doing Hogan's Heroes, which gave her quite a bit of street cred. Mm -hmm. And I'd say, you know, it's so great, kids watch it, they learn so much, and Sometimes they would buy. <laughs> this was when people not only answered their phone, they oh. didn't know who was calling, and people no. were selling things on the phone. Hundred percent, yes. So yeah, I no think I social media. There's none of mm -hmm. none of this. So this is what I was selling. Look at that. So oh, it had a book, a video. Goodness. That is that is the audio. first, right? Yes, this a, is the very the first title. The very the first. VHS and a book, and it's still all wrapped up. It didn't used to be yellow. <laughs> it was clear plastic. Oh, oh really? Okay. I got, oh, I wouldn't have even noticed that. And so you were familiar too with that. Well, this was before me. But oh, that yes. was what you used to, to train yourself. Was what the oh, video? That video? Yes, yeah. that video is the video that I, I that That's a gave special me. video for you. It was yeah. a training video. That was turned out to be my training video. Absolutely. So a quarter. For every one of those you sold at that time. <laughs> and the winner got dinner for two at the mansion. So hey. I got 90 something, 92, I think. And then the next person was in the low 30s. So you got dinner at the mansion. So I got dinner at the mansion. And uh. then when the second one was ready, which was, you know, four or five months later, there were just three of us. Okay. She called the people yeah. who weren't. Yeah. And, so, and then for the next one, I think I was the only one. How, how does a teacher 
who's talking to children and, 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 and uh, teaching children and learning, you know, making them learn and, and having that kind of a life, get into sales. I struggled with that, actually, because I thought people who sold were kind of slick and maybe not honest and that kind of whole thing about salesperson people that you think. And so I had to kind of convince myself that really in life, everything is about selling, you know, selling yourself, your, your ID, your point of view, your children on their bedtime, you know, it's all a process of convincing people. Yeah. So I kind of talked myself into believing that it was okay. Right. <laughs> but, but that was, kind of, that was a transition I had to make. And I think the reason it worked is I believed it. I believed every word I said. I saw something in Barney that was just so special. And I saw the way my kids acted from watching Barney. And I just thought, this is, this is it. And it's so funny. I did so many events and different things with you and with the whole sales. And they were always like that. They just believed they're, they're not, they believed it. They believed the product. That is a hundred percent the truth. They were, we were all passionate. We all believed that we could do this and that this was important and that it was important for kids. And we never said kids. They were always children. We never, you know, we always held kids in the highest of respect. Yes. And when people wrote and said they needed something, we had um, Donna Fankhauser was the head of our customer service. Mm -hmm. And if people needed something or wrote something, she went over the top to help them, to get them what they wanted. Because we wanted every experience to be perfect. But you had no idea where this was going to go in terms of a worldwide phenomenon. Actually, ah, <laughs> we did. Oh. This is kind of crazy. And I look back on it and I think, wow, we really were drinking the Kool-Aid. But five of us went away on a retreat to the Leech, um, Austin Lakewood house. And we talked about what we had in the pipeline and what we were doing and what our goals were. And literally on that page, before we had any reason, <laughs> any facts to base this up, there was a movie, there was a fan club, there was a TV show, there was a magazine, there was, you know, international. It was all on that piece of paper. And none of that had happened. I mean, that was just pure. It was craziness. And Imagination. What, it was. It really and what year was. was that? I am guessing that it was about 1991 or right. late 1990 because I'm pretty sure it was before we did the Neiman Marcus okay. program. And But I think we might have talked about it potentially becoming a, a real possibility. Wow. Isn't that crazy? Barney did change quite a bit. I know you brought some of them. Mm -hmm. um, when you first started, say before, you know, you had your piece of paper and knew kind of what right. your projection was going to be, Barney was a little different. Yes. Yeah, so when Barney, the first three shows, Barney was a, a true purple. And under the cameras, we didn't know that. He kind of went blue. So he looked much more blue than was the intention. And he was more angular. Yes. And honestly, telling tales out of school. But when I first saw him, I was like, really? <laughs> <laughs> right. I was a little bit surprised. But, you know, it's funny. It's like anything. Once you knew him, you loved him no matter what he looked like. Well, and did we have a picture? Did you bring a picture of one of the early, early days? Well, oh, you we can tell we even. Have. Oh, there we go. We'll okay. Yeah. For those of you who are, who are listening. Um, yeah. He's n blue. Mm -hmm. Uh Wow. And, and you can and see square. his nose is quite square. Very square. And his head is a little less rounded and, and a soft. turquoise dot on his back? <laughs> well, no, that's actually green. Back oh, to green. see? Yeah. Okay. It's green. And wow. that behind Barney, that's my youngest daughter. So she's oh. probably, I'd say, three or four there. Wow. Nice. So that would date us to about 1989. Yeah. Okay. Well, so then when did Barney become the Barney that we know and love? So for the television show, when we actually went on PBS, but our first, so we had, we were in the video business and we sold videos to direct to retailers. And as we built the distribution, we got a lot of letters from the fans saying, you know, my son and my daughter, they're sleeping with a video box. Could you come up with something a little softer than that? <laughs> we're like, yeah, okay, we probably should. So we did these little plush. 
Oh. And these actually, the six inch one, we only did um, as promotional items. So there was only 6,000 of these made. Oh, but the 14 inch, um, we did more. And we couldn't get anyone to license them. No one was interested. So we got Dakin who agreed to manufacture them for us. And so then we had to sell them ourselves, which we did. Which is pretty smart. <laughs> yeah, now, it worked it? out really yeah, great. It worked out really well. <laughs> it did. But we, it, at one point, we sold video into the retail. We sold plush into the toy department. We sold audio into the music department and books into the book department. So we had four different buyers that we were calling on, and we started a retail development team as well to kind of pull it all together and help with driving the business. Well, how did the colors come about then? How did you, how did you get the dots and the greens and the yellows? And <laughs> so um, when we went on PBS, we did a more, uh, we wanted him to be purple. So we understood how the camera then changed the color. And we went with uh, PMS 246, which is the Barney purple color. PMS 246. Yeah, mm. specific. Like, where did you, I mean, what does that stand for? Is well, so if you want to do a color and you want it to print a specific way or to be a certain dye color, there's a PMS book, and I guess it's a recipe. I don't, don't actually oh, know sure. for color, and it's that specific shade. So once we did that, then we wanted to also change the plush to be a little more in keeping with the Barney. But 246 was a little bit too pink. So the, all the Barney plush is 248. Too much to know. <laughs> oh my gosh. So then he looked like this is not, um, this was not a for sale item, but the little, so this is the color. And this is and Western, the Western, little shape. Western. Yes. Oh, and a ma we, we see yes. his teeth. Mm -hmm. He's got a hat on and a vest, a little yes. leather vest. And he, we did these for special events. Um, so that's why you have that press one. Right. <laughs> and this was for a video convention that was here in Dallas. So we felt like it really had to have a Texas theme. So you got to put them in a cowboy hat. Yeah. Okay. Well, the, the thing that the, uh, people are going to be losing their mind about is we need to talk about that one right there that's on the... The big this one. Is, everyone asks about the plush. Well, this is the real deal right here. This is the show plush. So this was on the TV show itself. Yeah. And you can see that it's a little bit wooly. It, there's texture, the texture to him. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness. And, and in addition, these are just glued on. Okay. And so, so when an episode and you would see Barney and then later Barney would appear, this is the, what you would see oh, right there. That, that one dog. right there. That was not for sale. That That is. Yep. That's the other thing that's very special over there, um, we all remember how big Talking Elmo was. Sure. Oh, well, before sure. Before Talking Elmo, there was Talking Barney. And for the times, he he said over a hundred, hundreds of phrases and sang. Oh my gosh! Which was pretty amazing at no, the time. No, delightful phrases, <laughs> <laughs> not just phrases. Delightful phrases. Oh my gosh! Oh my! And the super heavy duty brand batteries are included. I'm seeing that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that was very nice to did have you, the batteries. Who wrote, like who would write all? Is so that Hasbro thing? actually did this. Okay. Um, this and the, item. and it's all still wrapped up. That's that's what's amazing because so many kids we've heard from, they 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 don't have them anymore. They've been ruined or they got lost. Or yeah. Something. Well, we all kept. I know you have a play. I've got a right. storage unit. We we a lot of us still have all this. So one of the things that was part of my job was when when we were transitioning from this Barney to this Barney. Um, we had to change the color, and you'll notice he has five spots. Okay, five green spots mm -hmm. on his back. Okay. So off I go to Korea, because at that time the manufacturing was done in Korea. And I, we're working on patterns and what things cost. Remember, I grew up on a farm in Alberta, and so I'm like, <laughs> whoa, I'm here in Korea. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And... I find out that these little spots on my new plush are going to be 10 cents each. And I was like, oh my gosh, 50 cents for the spots? That's not going to work. 50 cents per dinosaur for this, just the spots at the Korean manufacturing plant. Oh. So I come back and I'm like, Cheryl, you know, like I can't do five spots. I can only do three. And and she was like, yeah, okay. And I but I want five spots. She was like, well, Debbie, you know, someday they won't even notice. And I was like, Okay, so that, that's how Barney only got three spots. Is 
Oh, but ha- but and so those are just stuck on on that the, the yes the these barn, are so yep. you just it's, have those little extra yep. that, so you were responsible for the th- three spots <laughs> because it was just too expensive isn't that it funny was. too expensive mm-hmm. I mean think about that now too yeah. expensive for this franchise well <laughs> right? and here's yeah. here's something else that'll blow your your mind um, that this woman is responsible for so last week we had Pia Hamilton on right and her character was Min yes guess who came up with the name of Min. Yes, they, Cheryl asked me, she said, you know, we want to have this character and uh, we want her to have a Filipino and something else name that would be appropriate for that. And she said, could you come up with some ideas for us? And so I did all kinds of research, went to the library, of course she did. called my cousin in Hong Kong, you know, because she had a Filipina maid and I was like, and came up with the name Min. Mm-hmm. It's so, what so about, I feel like we're kids there's a lot of here, right? <laughs> there and I, did you, What about the other names? Did, no, you know, just no. men. Mm-hmm. Which, but that's the most unusual, right? Yes. Nice job. Very nice. And job. isn't it funny? Just and you just had me. We're gonna have her on, have her on last week. So, so what was this about Neiman Marcus? And I know J C Penney did some things too. Right? Well, we got to talk about Neiman Marcus because okay. our executive producer Chris Kraft, his wife. I mean, they, they were very involved. Okay. Um, in this. So they were talking earlier about the whole Neiman Marcus. So one of the things about Barney was that it was always the two-year-olds. So if we had a difficult buyer or someone who didn't understand, we'd try and find a two-year-old around them, like maybe their admin or Mm. maybe someone else in the office to get them to watch the video and see, because then it was, we didn't have to explain it. Mm. And there were these women in Dallas who loved Barney because of their ch- little children. And they wanted to license Barney for stamps. So we called them the stamp ladies because we <laughs> licensed them. And they did roller stamps and stamping stamps. And they were, um, one of the women was the wife of the president of Neiman Marcus. So, yes. <laughs> so we had a Neiman Marcus program in um, September of 1991. And it it was incredible. We had a shop within a shop. They had plush that was exclusively designed for them by Gund. Um, oh, wow. They had, yeah, the sleeping bags, uh, Barney um, globes, just, you know, dozens of things in a big footprint. So I have pictures of that. I don't, well, who I thought of all these different things for Barney? Well, so then once there's a once you have somebody interested, that's the easy part because you're like, what else would kids like, and what would parents like to have? So we did a lot of room decor for Neiman Marcus because we thought that's something that they would really that Neiman Marcus clients would like customers. And how it did it do well? It did great. It did great. It was kind of a shock, I think, for Neiman Marcus because they had a, Barney appearances in a few of the stores, and like six or eight thousand yeah. people came. Crazy. And that. N- not typical traffic. Now, you, and you said you had a couple of pictures. I do. Did you do some of those? Not on Neiman Marcus. Oh, okay. See, that's the thing. This, you never know who's in that suit, except it's more than likely you. <laughs> right. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, my, uh, oh my right? gosh. Look, you have Barney in a top hat because it is Neiman's. That's good. So right. you've got Barney in a top hat and all the little goodies there and... Look at all that stuff. I mean, they did it up grand. Like, this is all wooden fixtures designed specifically for the Barney shop. I never had really noticed his little nails. His toe balls, yes. His toe balls? Is that what they're called? Yeah. Back in the day, they they didn't really look like that. Yeah, they became toe balls. Yeah. Wow. We, in the early days, had little yellow tennis balls. So if if a toe popped out on the road, (laughs) I could get get these little plastic ones that we got from a real discount store. Yeah. That's crazy. So... That was, again, one thing that came. Then the other thing that we went from Neiman Marcus to J.C. Penney. And, and that's where I, I came in. Okay, good. So J.C. Penney was moving their headquarters from New York to Dallas. And a lot of people in New York thought that was a really bad idea. And they, in fact, were here in the Lincoln Center when they first came, before they, you know, when they were building okay. in Plano. And I went to... A presentation that the CEO of JC Penney did and he talked about their values and so on. I thought this is just like Barney. We need to be in in JC Penney. So in keeping with your persistent story, I <laughs> searched for like over two years to get to the right person at JC Penney. And once I found them, 
Then the president of the children's division's grandson, Max, was two years old. Ah, uh, <laughs> Sensing you a go. theme here, right? Yep. 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 So Max loved Barney. And the JCPenney program was going to be, they had their own plush. Mm. They wanted a book. So, well, I guess we're going to have to publish a book, which is what we did. Um, also apparel and so on and so forth. And one of my friends at Jay-Z Fanny was telling me, you know, every time we have a meeting with Henry, we go to pull him back and it just gets bigger. Wow. So this is before PBS. So he was really taking a chance. He knew Barney was going on PBS in April, but he had no idea what that would actually mean. He just really believed in what he saw. And so, and one funny side story on that is, so in January, we have to sign up all these licensees and have product in market in October, okay. which is crazy too fast. <laughs> and we're at Dick's house again, sitting around the table, and they call a, a, a licensing consultant in New York. And they said to her, so what's the buzz on the street? And she said, I've been in the licensing business for a long time, and there is no JCPenney promotion. No, There's no licensing. I was like, Oh, I did not want to hear that. But in fact, she was wrong. They had 187 products that hit the stores in October. And our first appearance was October 4th, I think, mm -hmm. at Mes in Mesquite. Yep. And over 40,000 people came. Yep. That was my first appearance. Do you remember? Oh, yeah. I mean, so... Yeah. So he's in the store at first, and we're, you know, getting the kids walking. They're coming through the mall, through the store, and past Carrie for a quick little hello and on. And then we realize it's, the store's going to close. There's no way these kids are all going to see Barney, and that's not acceptable in our world. So I guess Sloan must have thought of it. You'll have to ask her, but they got a convertible. And Barney walked the line, then he got in the back of a yep. convertible, mm. and they drove yes. that line outside, which was a mile long. Yeah, and I was afraid I was going to go off the back of the... <laughs> and were you sitting on the back of the... On the back, back yes. And yes. just yes. trying to wave with your little hands? And hold on. Yeah, yeah, let's, not, was... let's not tell your mother. Yeah. <laughs> oh, she learns more and more of things that I do that she shakes her head. I think someone was holding I'm my sure legs. I'm sure they must have. Yeah, because otherwise car. you could have fallen back. Well, right. Or, you know. Just spread out the... Sure. Yeah. Which would not have been good in front of the children. No. <laughs> or for Carrie's health. That's true. That's true, too. Well, um, well, so what about when you went back to Canada? Now, here you're this... Now, when you went to Canada, were you this big, successful now marketing executive for Barney? Well, with my, I had a niece who loved Barney. Okay. So with her, I was sort of godlike. And, <laughs> and also my sister-in-law, she loved Barney. And in fact, in December, we were just at the um, Universal Studios and we dropped in on the Barney show. And my sister-in-law wanted to stay for the whole thing. Oh. And she especially wanted to hear the Everyone is Special song. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. So she still remembered all. You got a little tear. Did you get a little tear in mm, there? It was kind of tender. Aww. And what was interesting, it, not surprising, the millennials are the ones who are coming with their children. But what surprised me is they said lots of millennials come without their children. And they watch the show and they sing and they dance and they get up off, on their feet. And I was like, oh, wow. Because that was so important to them. And that's for 25 years, almost mm -hmm. 25 years now. Yeah. That show's been there with, you've had Harry Potter and all these things that have come in and Barney's still going 25 and gone, years. you're right. Going. You know, like Jaws is gone now. Terminator, and, I think it came and left. And yeah. A lot of them did yeah. and there's still Barney going yes. strong. So Barney does still live some, Absolutely I mean, if not in does. your heart and your mind, he's at least in well, Florida. He lives in all and our I tell you, they've done an amazing job. It's, it looks beautiful. They've kept it up really nicely. The show was great. There was lots of confetti and sparkles. Sloan would have been happy. <laughs> Sloan would be very happy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, but you all did an event together in Canada, didn't you? Oh, the Toronto one. Yeah. That was I a see. crazy one. Uh -huh. they, it was interesting because when you do an event, sometimes you don't think through all the details. And this is an outdoor event, and we've got all these strollers. So we start ticketing them, you know, here and park them. And there's literally an acre of parked strollers. <laughs> 
And the front page of the Toronto paper the next day was a huge photograph of that, and it said it was titled "Stroller Gridlock." It was amazing. How did anyone know which stroller was theirs? That's what I said. It's thank God it was Canada because those Canadians <laughs> wait in line. They were polite. They let us struggle to try and figure. You said it was green. <laughs> There's a hundred green ones here. Oh it was really crazy. And you remember Toronto? Oh, sure. Absolutely. We also had to disinfect the costume because, you know, when you're in there, Carrie's working hard and gets kind of stinky in there. A sweaty. A little bit. And we used vodka. We would spray the inside of the costume with vodka, which would kill the bacteria, and then it evaporates quickly. With alcohol. And there's I no smell. That's what we'd normally use. Yeah, but it's not because of the stinky. You know why they did that, right? Because Barney needed a drink? No. <laughs> <laughs> because know, it, it would not. break down the costume. Oh. The sweat was... would break down. Oh, interesting. No kidding. Yeah, it would break down the... the I think it the, worked two ways then. The <laughs> It would break... Yeah, I mean, obviously, it helped for that yeah. part. But, but it didn't we were the same good. people getting in, so we didn't care about the stinky. But it would, it would actually <laughs> preserve. And that's why we oh. also used to wear winter silks. Like you would go sure. for that same reason to hold the sweat on us. To so get little bottles of vodka and just... We did. Just... We went to the bar and we're like, oh, could we have four vodkas in the bottle? <laughs> <laughs> we had to buy the little ones. Really? Yeah, Kids, was... don't try this at home. Yeah, it was, you know, it forget, was... the, forget the vodka. Um, that's crazy. And Sloan said, I'll never do another outdoor event. But she did. She did. <laughs> we did several of them. We knew not to ask her for a while. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Being... Coming from an education uh, standpoint, I mean, as a teacher, did that help you relate to your audience? I think it did, yes. And, you know, it, it's an interesting fact that uh, Yale University did a study on the Barney shows, the PBS ones, and they're 26 minutes, 30 seconds, something like that. There's over 100 teaching moments in each episode on average. And it's little things like you should have Marianne come in. Because Marianne, Marianne is. Yeah. Yes. So teachers were involved with the edu each episode. They went over the educational part of it as well. The other aspects right. of the show. And let's say you were counting. And so you might be like one, two, three. They would have you count from left to right because that's the same progression as reading. Oh. And so little details like that, that, you know, the rest of us wouldn't notice, no. but they paid really close attention to that so that every moment that could be a, a teaching moment was. was so did your kids just think you were the coolest mom ever <gasps> they actually would roll their eyes sometimes my oldest daughter was like yeah they call me the barney girl at school but Aww. she kind of liked oh, it oh sure uh, oh look okay here we have the barney girl yeah she's to to my whatever that is <laughs> yeah, we've got the picture up, and there's Barney. Mm -hmm. and, and then my daughter, Catherine, is hugging Barney. Oh, look. And my daughter, Patricia, has her eyes closed. Oh, but I love her little haircut. Yeah. Right. Bowl cut. That's <laughs> yeah. so cute. And look at oh. And, and I'm about 100 years younger there. Some of the original there. cast kids you're seeing. Yep, Michael. With, okay. And the, your and kids Sean. were in some of the shows, right? We did a concert. Our very, very first concert was in Allen in 1990, and all three of the girls were in that concert. Oh, my goodness. And then... Um, the majestic concert that was the big. alexander was in it and so was penny's daughter yes who uh i was going to mention this the other day someone was sent out a i loved kelly at radio city music uh, radio city live well that was miss penny's daughter she right yeah a little right. bit right she was in several right a little bit yeah, yeah. i forgot <laughs> that yeah and we it was a family affair you know we we had that concert the dads took the tickets, the kids stuffed envelopes, you know, we, we all worked on various things just because it was such a, a family thing. And fun. It was. I mean, it, it, you know what? Everyone was happy. Your audience was happy. Mm -hmm. You didn't have to worry about anyone being sad or, you know, perking someone up. Right. Well, it was a lot of work and some days were tough. <laughs> we took a lot of rejection in those first few years. Such as? Well, like, Hanging up, straight up, people would click the phone and we'd be, okay, next. Wasn't it true that Blockbuster? Blockbuster's a really fun story because Cheryl was trying to get Let's them. Let's remind some people about Blockbuster. <laughs> yes, because <laughs> I mean, it was really the, and truly, not everyone remembers Blockbuster is where you rented your videos. You and they probably had 20,000 locations. Oh, I mean, they were absolutely. bigger you had than a Blockbuster big car franchises and, and yeah. so on, yes. 
And it was huge. she wanted to do a promotion where you videotaped your child singing and dancing. You send it in, and the winners got a walk-on part on Barney. So the corporate office said no. But if you want to do the regionals, you know, and you can get a regional or two, whatever, to do it, then go right ahead. She got all the regions to do it. <laughs> so therefore, she had a national promotion. They were furious. They were like, you, yes, you can do this, but, you know, tomorrow I want to talk to you about how you managed to pull this off so it never happens again. She went around the system. Yep. Yeah. Go over so everybody's head. No corporate blessing, but it was... <sighs> In fact, a national program. So, Which is what wow. ended up um, uh, Barney Video being in the Connecticut. Yes. with That's uh, how we got on PBS. Yeah. Larry Rifkin's daughter, Leora, yes. loved Barney, two-year-old. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she rented the video, which he said, oh, maybe there's something here. Next thing you know, we're on PBS. Well, it was a little longer than that. Well, sure. They called I mean, us an overnight sensation, yeah. right? Yeah, they Not called so us on May 2nd, and they and this is what he said, welcome to PBS. And we were like, yes. <laughs> We'd stayed late for the call, and they didn't call, and they didn't call, and we were like, oh, man. And then the phone rang. But then that didn't, didn't they take it off of PBS? They never took it off. Oh, okay. What it they was said was, they was, oh. what they said is that we're not going to make any more shows. Okay. So in, in effect, that's being canceled, but it wasn't that they weren't going to air the shows okay. that they had, but they were no more because they could do the other two shows that they did in that same initiative uh, were Thomas and Lamb Chop, and they could do both of those shows. I did like Lamb, I was a Lamb Chop For kid. the price of Barney. Well, people went nuts. Oh, you're kidding. They went crazy. And there were articles like, take away my apple pie, take away baseball, but don't touch my Barney. <laughs> and literally thousands of people wrote their PBS station, phoned their PBS station, picketed their PBS station, and within a very, very short time. They were, Hello, we've changed our mind. We found the money. <laughs> but were you funny, afraid that. that maybe it was going to stop there? Did no, that ever occur to it, you? No, it didn't. No, I don't think any of us thought. We just, because we saw, we had a million people in our fan club. We, yeah, it was just too, there was too much momentum there. And once you again, think about stop. that. This is not through social media. This is not through a million in the fan club. Yeah, and we would send out packets. I have one here, you know, that that gave you a membership that just I mean, if, you're, if you're watching it, there's stacks that Cheryl had or uh, Cheryl that De Debbie this, has here for sure. So this is Cheryl's oh, handwriting. Oh. So it must have been a note that she sent to me about this. Let's get this weighed with all the stuff that would go in it. So you can mail it. Because we mailed it. It was so expensive <laughs> to do. Well, if you large couldn't afford the dots, how could you afford the stamps? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Luckily, we didn't start with a million. But Lynn Carlton Aww. managed the fan club for many, many years. And then she worked over on your side. Right? Yeah. Oh my goodness! So what one other it? thing that I forgot, I wanted to go. There back. was a re uh, what, was there a review or what is it that there was the yeah, backyard that's gang. So cute. So our very first video, we got reviewed in People magazine. We were so excited. Sure. <laughs> so this is a bad photo. So what is the best? What is, what is the one thing that stands out to you on that article? The review. So he writes, "There's a primitive '50s feel to this live action videotape designed for children ages two to eight. And then he goes on to kind of bash it a little bit. He leads the kids through colorless performances of a few familiar songs, many of them perverted with stupid new lyrics. This old man, for instance, turns into I Love You. The half hour tape is the first in a projected series developed by Cheryl Leach and Kathy Parker, blah, blah, blah. They might be better off expending their energies in the direction of those two demanding pursuits. In other words, motherhood and teaching. Oh, my God. What was his name? Go ahead. He, What's his he was, name? It's, he was pretty wrong, Ralph. Ralph? Where's Ralph today? Ralph Novak. Yeah. yeah. Oh. He but, kind of missed the boat on that. But do you think about it yeah. for Cheryl? Like, sh somebody put it in the office, and we were... A little heartbroken for sure sure and it was just the first video so talk about like needing to persevere right. against all odds and dick leach her father-in-law said you know what the only bad press is no press and we all went okay yep that's right they're talking about us and he wasn't your audience that's yes. the bad thing about critics too he 
wasn't your audience. And that was one thing. Barney was really pure and true to the to the children. So it was really designed every bit for a two-year-old. And if it strayed a little, you know, we were always pulling it back. Hit the mic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's okay. So was there ever time when your friends said, what, I mean, like in the early years, what are you doing? I mean, or was your husband on board? I mean, it was, was it so under the radar. Yeah. I think nobody really thought much about it. And then when it took off, they were like, wow, how did you know that would happen? <laughs> yeah. There's that. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. But once again, it wasn't happening like you would see it today. No. Because we didn't know, like it was happening. You know, I would go on the weekend and see 50,000 people. But not everyone knew that. Mm -hmm. I mean, you heard Jeff Ayers when he was here in our first episode. He really didn't know how big it was because he was just in the studio doing it, living in Dallas, Texas. Well, and especially you were on the tour and you saw the right. kids, so but you didn't know. It. But I meant at the same time, you you had no idea. You saw well, and we really there. saw it with when Carrie went on the road because forty thousand in Mesquite. It was the same everywhere he went. And before the Mesquite one, I met with Pennies, and uh, we were talking about it, and they said, oh, we've done Boys to Men and Celebrities. We've got this. And the next day, they were like on the phone at 8 in the morning. You need to come out here. <laughs> we need to figure this out. This is like crazy. And that Mesquite store, there wasn't a piece of clothing on a rack. Everything was on the floor. Destroyed. It was destroyed. Oh and I God. said to the store manager, oh, my gosh, I'm so sorry. You know, we'll help you. And he said, no, 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 you guys go. This is the best thing ever. I'd do it again tomorrow. Well, and, you know, Dennis talks of Dennis DeShazer was at, with me in Irving where he had to actually go get a van. And they had to get me out of that mall and throw me in a van and drive <laughs> off. And he said, I'll never go to one of these again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's you have to have security. Well, and he tells this very funny story of, of this lady came up and she wanted a balloon. They'd already given up all the balloon. Everything was gone. And she said, who do you work for, Barney or JCPenney? He goes, JCPenney. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Good one. That's great. Good one. And then didn't you get an award from JCPenney? I did. Oh, my goodness. I did. What, Carrie, tell. I, I, not only did we get an award. Uh, it was Kathy Schumack and myself that did all of them. Um, what did Kat and Kathy put together the show? Or what no, Kathy, Kathy Schumack traveled with me. So okay. she was the representative with Barney and making sure everything okay. went well and all of that. You know, then and they would remember that to give him clearance when he came out. Got and, it. You know, all those, sure. Absolutely. All those details. Watch okay. the kids, make sure I was okay. All mm -hmm. of those things. His well, Barney I, guard. I always, the coolest thing is that they. His Barney guard. <laughs> I just came up with that. Sorry. But no, the coolest thing was that they they gave us uh, uh, a gift card, gift something. Anyway, I was able to buy a TV with that, and oh. I was twenty something years old, and I thought that's the coolest thing ever. Well, and you got I remember like <laughs> I, a, got, a, I know a I got an award in TV, so right. I thought it was yeah. like, twenty four years old or something. I'm like this is cool. But I will <laughs> tell you, they told me because that was it was um, Jackie Dunn. It was her department that kind of manage the marketing side of that. And she said, we've done all these celebrities, all these tours, music bands, et cetera, et cetera. And he said, Carrie was the nicest person, always happy, always willing to go the extra mile. Whatever we asked of him, he gave it 100%. And they just had never seen that before and were just so pleased well, with everything. Thank you for that. I that was such a growing period for me because once again, I was 24 years old at that point. I had never seen anything like the love that these children had and waiting hours and hours and hours and hours. And they were so excited for a hug or a high five or whatever it may mm -hmm. be. There was no way I was ever leaving one of those kids. If they wanted a hug, if they, we would stay hours and hours and hours mm -hmm. to do that. And it was incredible. And then it was so funny because we'd go from one mall to the next. And so we'd stop, you know, somewhere to get food. And I'd be sitting having food with all the people. Oh, who would just oh, be Oh, yeah, Kathy and I'd be in there having a, a hamburger. And everybody would be like, oh, my God, I just met Barney. It was the coolest thing oh, ever. Oh, no. And I'm sitting right there. Kathy and I are just smiling, having a, having a soda. <laughs> That's and, awesome. Oh, yeah. And you never, never gave it away. Never. That's another thing I never. was wanted to be sure and tell. They came to the corporate office for all kinds of things. We'd go to the set for all kinds of things. I never, ever saw them speak in the costume ever like they totally were 
Barney when they were in it, and that was that. And you know, we were friends. So and so, come on, yeah. Sure. So I'd be talking away, and the actions would come, but never a word. It was amazing. Yeah, it was just it was such a incredible experience to see how real. I mean, he was real. I completely agree. We did not think of Barney as a character ever. He really was someone to us. And they are, sometimes our buyers would say, well, I think you bleed purple. And we were like, yeah, I think we do. Yeah. <laughs> it's but literally true. Is that the Barney magic? Well, here's the funny thing. And we've talked about this. And I thought it was interesting when you said earlier, your side. There was a like the creative, the, the business side and then the other side. And we called it Barney Magic, but what did you call it? Yeah, we called it the Barney Rainbow because in our world, magic maybe had a bad connotation. So we called it the Barney Rainbow and we saw it all the time when things would just come together magically. And then if we actually saw a real rainbow, we thought we'd well, you, hit the you created it. Right. <laughs> but it was, it really, you know, like an example, we also did those special events and we had a call from a a family that said their child, this child was very, very ill and really wanted to see Barney. And we did everything to try and make those happen. But we just straight up didn't have a costume. And we were like, you know, we'd do anything, but we just, we don't, we physically don't have a costume anywhere near. And near New Jersey or wherever it was up in the Northeast. And he said, oh no, you misunderstood. That's where I'm from. But the child is in the Las Vegas hospital. And we were like, oh my gosh, we're there for VSDA, our video convention. We have a costume. Instead of, you know, a meet and greet with our customers, he's going to the hospital. Oh and my. that's, you know, and that happened a couple of times where just by some miracle, we happened to be there. The things fell together and we called it the Barney Rainbow. And it was such a humbling experience because I did all those conventions with you guys in Vegas and I get to, to do the convention and of course it's Vegas and fun and all that, but I always got to do a hospital there. And mm -hmm. it's just such a humbling, uplifting yes. experience. I've always said I got so much, I, I always believed that I got so much more from those kids than I could have ever have gotten the lessons and the love and it was incredible. And to watch a child, like I can think of one particular one and I was there with a couple of my teammates because we actually were in Toronto to do business. And this child was in Hamilton, which was a two or three hour drive. So we were like, okay, so the meeting's going on the road. <laughs> and at the hospital, it was so hard to see these children. And we wanted to be sad and wanted to cry. And we were just like, no, by golly, this we're going to be happy. We're going to be uplifting. You know, we're going to bring the Barney message and we'll cry later. And we did. Because they oh, never did. You never saw never. the kids oh my sad. Gosh. We have this one beautiful video of the little kid. Barney walks in and he pulls back the covers and lifts up his feet. And he's like, Barney, look. He's got Barney slippers on. Oh. And he's so happy. Mm, 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 mm. And he knows that Barney's, you never saw him nervous, right? Because he knows Barney's going to be interested. He mm -hmm, wants to see the mm -hmm. slippers. He, Mm -hmm. He gave attention equally to every one of those kids. For sure. Yes. And we would have people who would say, you know, I'll spend $10,000 for Barney to come to the, my kid's birthday party. And we'd be like, sorry, we don't do that. Not anymore. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, my Once gosh. Once we stopped, we, it was a full stop. But it, we would do anything for someone who needed sure. Barney. You have made so many people happy. I mean, that's that's what I get out of this. It's amazing how many lives you have touched and continue to touch. How would you say Debbie Barney changed you and your life? It, it was a huge change. So for me, I, I mean, I was a mom with three children, staying at home. I was a teacher and suddenly like over, suddenly overnight. Suddenly yeah. overnight. <laughs> I am running a big sales organization. I'm traveling around the world. I'm introducing kids in different countries. You know, we, Barney was in over 220 countries. Um, we sold enough videos at over 135 million. That's more than one for every household in America. We sold, you know, a, 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 
I forget now, there's a, some crazy hundred and some million books as well. And you just think about the scale of those numbers, that how many people... If there was a two-year-old that didn't know Barney, I'd be surprised. <laughs> that, that Barney uh, album um, that was shipped out double platinum. It's Yeah, before it actually hit the streets, it was double platinum, and then it was triple platinum after it was actually for sale. But there was a lot of emotion behind every sale, wasn't there? Everyone, yes. You could join the fan club. You know, we, we did a program once where Barney could phone you on your birthday, and... It was yes, and it, I think that that was the beautiful thing. It it attracted a certain kind of person to the business, and who bled purple. Mm. And it really, it was an amazing time, and we really knew it as we went through it. We were like, we're doing something so special that people only dream about happening to them. You know, I never told people what I did because I didn't want to get into that. I did it all day long, and I traveled <laughs> a lot, but. Barney would always come up, and I'd be like, oh. And they'd say, oh, yeah, and I I did all the Barney t-shirts. And I'd be like, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I loved is, and this, I love that this message keeps coming out, because when I first started, I had people going, oh, my God, you guys are making all this money, and da 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 They insisted on taking us to these hospitals. When things like that came up, all of the employees would try to make something happen if, like, for example, the Vegas that she just told was always about mm -hmm. that. Whatever mm -hmm. we can do, we were mm -hmm. always about mm -hmm. that. The tour, you heard Sloan mm -hmm. talk about it. Every city she insisted going into a hospital. It wasn't about having the press there. It was about yeah. Barney going to see the kids. Yeah. And that was a core yeah. to the business. It was. And in the early days, you know, this is, I think, another good example of the kind of people. They knew, you know, we were trying to build something and it was hard. And we had a, an order that had to go out and it had to be overnight. And it was really <laughs> expensive, like maybe $6,000. And we were just dying a little bit about it. And one of the guys in the warehouse figured out, if we get here at three o'clock and load that truck, three o'clock in the morning, in the middle of the night, and load <laughs> that truck, we can get it in a truckload and it'll only be $300 or $600. And so he asked for volunteers, would, you know, would anyone come help load that? Everyone volunteered. Aww. Everyone. So, so, I mean, that's it. There is blood, sweat, and tears, and so much love and smiles and, and in all of this Barney world. Well, one of the reasons I want to start this show, for that reason, is that all of these people that know, you know, that love him so much, understand we loved it, we loved you. And we put everything we had to make it happen. It wasn't just mm -hmm. about making money. Yeah, it was it about was passion and commitment. For passion sure. and love and commitment. Yeah. Ownership. And we got excited about the, the numbers too, because I mean, it was a validation that Barney is that special. Like everybody wants that. And that was a real, you know, to see that and realize, wow, like all those kids have a Barney plush now. But and after, we're doing it from Dallas, Texas. That's right, oh, which is kind of good yeah. under the radar. Yes. <laughs> but then 19 years you spent with Barney, you mm -hmm. have your own company now. Yes. You do your marketing mm -hmm. and, and things. So do they all know about Barney, all these clients of yours? Do you? They probably do. Because they will. It, yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, in, in addition, just through the company, we brought the Wiggles to America. We did... We launched Bob the Builder. We brought Veggie Tales to the general market. We um, had we launched Angelina Ballerina. We built Thomas the Tank Engine up. He was already great, right? But, but we sure, helped you make him greater. Yeah. <laughs> so it, you know, it touched a lot of really amazing kids' properties. But the best part, Debbie, is that you still love Purple Tales so much, and I Barney, do. you you've listened to all of our episodes, Everyone. haven't you? So have you have you um, subscribed? Yes. <laughs> have you shared? <laughs> I have. And have you liked? Liked. Oh, I'm not sure. Oh, like. Okay, well then you've got some homework <laughs> tonight. <laughs> okay, <That's> right, <laughs> Debbie Reese. Thank you so so well, much. Is there you. a song that you'd like? To, I love to. I always like it when we have a song to take us out. Do you have anything you want to sing together, you guys? What was your favorite song? Should we? Well, I would do this for my sister-in-law Susan. Okay. Okay. You're special. All right. So, do you want to start it? You You, you are special, special. special. Everyone, Everyone is special. I gotta dance. Or Everyone in his or her own way. way. 
five, six, seven, eight. Special. <laughs> you're supposed to join <laughs> in, Nancy. Uh, uh, I don't know. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Oh, my God. Thank and you. all of the toys and stuff. And Carrie, this has been wonderful. It has That's been fun. The business of Barney. Yeah, and there's so much more. I know. You'll be come back. <laughs> okay. okay. You will be back.